benefit. So today, how to create when your world is in chaos. And, uh, and right now, I think it's obvious that there's lots going on, you know, and, I, and uh, to, to understand that as we're, as we're creating, we're in a co-creative universe, and there's lots of things out there that uh, can steal your attention. I talked about this a little bit last week. Uh, and, and that's okay. You know, at the moment there's, there's war, there's inflation pressures, there's, uh, you know, there's still, there's still a, a pandemic or, or restrictions. There, there's, there's simply just a lot. And, uh, and what I want to want to talk about is that is, is this isn't abnormal. It's just a little bit heightened at the moment. And obviously we're all hearing about it a lot. So today's theme is, you know, how do you create when, when your world is falling apart? And, uh, and that's, that's a, it's a good, it's a really good theme. So uh, I'll share with you something that's, uh, that's extremely personal and uh, really, you know, it was a big shift in my life. It's actually six years uh, to the day that my whole life uh, changed, which is today. So six years ago, uh, my, my business partner was killed. And, uh, and that, and those of you, most of you know the story. So Mark Deason uh, was, was killed in a motorcycle accident and, and it really shifted and changed my whole perspective in my whole life and it, and it birthed what we have now. And, and what, what happened was it wasn't just that the, the tragic loss of, of him and, and, and that happened. It was actually what happened around that. So to, to fill you in on the story, it, it turned into be a really hard time for, for me. And, and the reason why it was so hard is, number one, the way that I had structured my business was, yes, I was turning over a few million dollars at the time, but I was redlining it. Does that make sense? I was redlining, meaning even though millions was coming in, millions was going out. So we didn't have any, we didn't really save. We just were, were going and spending and traveling and like there was nothing, there was nothing there. The second is uh, the business. I didn't know how to do the, what he did in the business. So the business was, there was no uh, second or third layer of people that could do what he did. In fact, uh, some of my team that are still on here, uh, or still in the team, remember this, I didn't actually know the names, we had 40 odd staff at the time, I didn't actually know the names of a bunch of the people, or even what they did, or how to do anything, uh, I was, I was basically the, the speaker, I was out there, you know, promoting, I was doing, uh, doing my part, and, and then he was running all the operations, and so as soon as he wasn't there, um, one, my emotions were, were not in the best place, but, but two, uh, there was many other things that happened, you know, uh, one thing that was really difficult is I'd had people pay me um, for services and I wasn't able to deliver to those services. Um, but because of everything that went wrong, I didn't actually have the money. I couldn't just refund them. I didn't have the money. So I had these people and I remember the conversations. They were really good friends of mine and, and still, we're still good friends now. And they said, Chris, like I have no other option but to sue you. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. Like, so obviously we, we didn't have to go down that way. And I said, well, the only thing I can do is, you know, go on payment plan and pay you back. Like that's, that's the only option I have. I've completely screwed up. And a few other people were really angry, you know, and they said, you know, uh, how could you be running a business so poorly? How could you not have something that I didn't know about, which was called key person insurance? How, how could all this happen? And, and so here's my point is that, you know, even though something really unexpected and bad happened, what made it worse was that I wasn't uh, in the right frame of mind. I wasn't prepared and I wasn't even thinking about how to build my own, my own capacity. Does that make sense? So this bad, tragic thing happened and that was really, really bad. But what made it worse was how I was orienting to life. And this is true for and relevant to us right now. So looking back on it, you never are going to know. And I want you to write this down. You, you're not going to know what straw is going to break the camel's back. You're not going to know what straw is going to break the camel's back, but you can see a camel that is really struggling. Just think about that for a second. You're not going to know which straw is going to break it, which final thing will be the one that breaks it, but you can see something struggling. Anyone heard that saying before? And so when we think about the world right now, we can see some, quote, struggling camels, hey? And we don't know which straw is going to be the thing that, that creates, uh, creates the, the, the break or, the, or a completely something bad happening for you. Does that make sense? You're not going to know. We can't predict the future. 
But what we can do is make sure that that we don't have and we're not oriented at a place that one little thing happens and the whole thing blows up. Because if I look back at that moment, if I had played, if that happened to me now, I've got cash, I've got insurances, I've got multiple people that can help in every area. There's nothing in my company that I can't, I can't really figure out. It's completely different. If that same thing happened now, I would be, I would be absolutely devastated personally with you know but but i'd be okay does that make sense the same thing wouldn't happen and and same with many other things that might happen in our life so i want you to hear this is right now there's a lot of there's a lot of noise out there in the world there's huge conflict happening in europe there's pandemics there's inflation crisis there's threats of rising interest rates is this true let me know is this true right now there's a lot there's pandemics, there's vaccine part, there's so much happening. There's so much happening. And we don't know which one of those are going to happen. But can we all agree, we can see a struggling camel. And there's going to be something at some point that turns out to be not as you want it. True, can we agree? And we can't guess when or where. But here's what we do know is that if we right now choose to have the right skills, the right capabilities, to be in the right focus, when that happens, you'll be like I am now versus how I was in 2016. Does that make sense? Right now, if it happens, I'm good. And so, so that's what the theme is today, is the theme is to understand, and this comes from uh, Dr. Stephen Covey, uh, another great person who's no longer on this plane, is I took my team through this earlier this week. So a few of you have already been trained on this. I'm drawing two circles. The outside circle here is the circle of concern. Concern, oops, I didn't even nail. I didn't even spell concern right. That's a concern. Oh, come on, sort it out, Duncan. Concern. And then, and the, and the inside here is a circle of influence or control. Now, what are some of the things right now that are in the circle of concern? The circle of concern are just all the things you're concerned about. So you might be concerned about the political situation, the climate, uh, your own wealth, your own family. So everything's in the circle of concern, true? There's, there's so much stuff, right? There's a lot in that circle of concern. Uh, where we're going, where our kids are going to go, artificial intelligence coming in. Uh, are we going to have uh, a universal basic income? You know, what's happening with the, the, the financial reset? What's, what's crypto going to like? There's so much, right? Concern. Okay, now out of everything that's in the circle of concern, okay, everything that's in that, the, the circle of concern is this, your circle of influence. So out of everything that you might be concerned about, including your own, your own self, your own things, what is it that you have influence over? So let's fill this in the chat box. What are some things you have influence over? Hmm? What are some of the things you have influence over? Your focus, your thoughts, yeah. Your investments, yeah. Your own stuff, your emotions, your tribe, yeah. Your skills, write down your skills, your, your capabilities, your behaviors. You, you have control over that. You have control over your preparedness, you see? What happens is the more time that you spend in each one of these circles, the more it grows. The more you spend in just all the concerns that you can't influence at all, the more those things weigh on you. The more that you focus on what you can influence and what you can do, the more you're in control. Does that make sense? The more you're in control. So. The question I have for you is how do you shift your focus to what you can influence? Can you right now find a place in your consciousness that can rise above the threat of war and pandemics? Can you find peace and love? 
Can you find a moment of peace and love and, and abundance? Can you find that in the field? And can you focus on that? And could you, could you spend a, a half hour of meditation just, just finding that place of peace? And if that place of peace is, exists in you, couldn't it exist in everyone else? Could you spend a moment doing that? Could you think to yourself, how do I make myself even more robust? What skills, what, what do I want to do? Do, do I want to add, you know, another, another income stream? Okay. So there's a threat of inflation that might happen. Do I want to get myself ready so that when things do inflate, I'm going to get a piece of that. You know, one of the best ways to have no challenges with inflation is to, is to be set up for all options. What can I influence? What can I control? My understanding, my knowledge, my focus, my emotional intelligence, my emotional mastery. And, and by focusing on that, can everyone see how powerful you are? See how powerful you are. So you become powerful. So what I'm not, what I'm saying is I'm not saying to be an ostrich and put your head in the sand and not know about worldly events. I'm just saying that if you spend your time thinking and worrying about things you have no ability to influence, you're just going to waste moments of your life. Who agrees with that? If you spend time out there focusing on all these things, if you can't influence it, if you can't control it, you know, other people's, if you can't control or influence it, then there's, there's, you've got no business being there, you know? what can you what can you influence so you're up you know you're upset that people are killing people and it's you know you can do something else you can do something you and and focus on what you can do and you see that the more that you stay in your circle of influence and control the more powerful you are and and, and so there for me if i look back on uh 2016 when a completely unknown um black swan event happened my best friend, business partner, I talked to him uh, 10 hours beforehand, then uh, uh, 12 hours later, I'm getting a call to say he's gone. You know, a truck swerved across the center line, took him out, gone. And the, I, 12 hours before, I was excited. We just spent, we just went and put a hundred something thousand dollars to take Gary Vaynerchuk to Australia. First time he's coming to Australia. I've done all these cool things. And I was ready. I was going for it and everything was fine. But I knew that I was, I was right on the edge. I wasn't in control. Does that make sense? I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't being, uh, I wasn't being smart. Uh, and I knew it. And then when the bad thing happened, which I already knew easily things can happen. And that was completely unexpected. Not only did I have to deal with the bad thing, I had to deal with my, uh, unresponsibility of the of the other thoughts does that make sense everyone and so this is what i want you to really really get we don't know which straw is going to break the camel's back out there but if you want to be a conscious creator i think it's wise to notice that there's a there's a few struggling camels the economy, the, the political system, who would agree with that? There's a few things that we don't know when the next little thing is going to be the thing that just causes, is, is it true? Is that true? Like, is, or, or am I being super negative? I don't think, I think I'm literally looking at what everyone else is looking at it. Is it true? And so, so we know that. So there's no point getting upset about it. There's no point, you know, worrying, you know, there's no, no point. There's one point to ask yourself, how do I, what can I influence? What can I control? True. What can I influence? What can I control? Because I want to know that if, uh, if those I'm already centered, I'm already there. And it's a funny thing because as, as creators, many of us tend to be super optimists, say, and, and, you know, and that's great. And one of the things is, is to also be able to look at current reality. Okay. So what that means is, is as you're creating, current reality is always shifting. And if you have an inability to look at current reality as it is, and potential, uh, potential uh, co-creations that, that may happen, if you're unable to look at that, then unfortunately, you may have a situation like I had in 2016, which it was obvious. Looking back, I already knew 
that I should have been doing something else, putting money aside, having insurances, doing other things. I already knew it. It wasn't that I wasn't smart. It wasn't that I didn't know that having a reserve of capital was needed. It wasn't that I didn't have the ability to do that. I just ignored it. I just ignored it. So first teaching point today, first thing I want you to really get is there is a circle of uh, influence and then there's a circle of control. If you, what, if you focus on what you can control more uh, and what you can influence instead of what you can concern, what you're concerned about, you'll find yourself into a very, very, very powerful position. So let me talk through uh, some more and we're going to do a great, a great recode. So I want to talk about the, the seven secrets of magic. This is from William Whitecloud and, and give you my take on it because uh, many of us need to bring it back and then we're going to do a great recode and have lots of fun. Does that sound good? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So I guess that the little theme there is, you know, focus on the best, expect the best, and also acknowledge that we live in a co-creative universe and uh, the opposite could happen. So we are going to be doing double bubble today. All right. So the first teaching point, your thoughts and feelings are not reality. I covered this a little bit uh, last week. Your thoughts and feelings are just your unconscious response to reality. Okay, thoughts and feelings aren't actual reality. It's just your unconscious response uh, uh, to to the reality. So many people, uh, you know, they matter and pose on top of, of the actual reality, some thoughts and feelings, and uh, and that's that's a really interesting thing. So taking forward this week, first thing is to understand your thoughts and feelings about a thing aren't the thing. How you feel about the relationship and what you think about it, how, what you feel and think about economy, what you feel and think about government, what you feel and think about other people's opinions aren't the actual thing. Does that make sense? It, it isn't the actual thing. The actual thing is, is completely complex and there's many different viewpoints. So the first thing is your thoughts and feelings are not reality. In fact, two people, and you guys know this, Two people can be looking at the exact same thing and have different thoughts and feelings about it, like a government mandate or a, or a war or, a, or, a, or a whatever, whatever we're talking about, like a business. Two people look at the same thing. They both have different thoughts and feelings. It's not the reality. So you always got to step back and go, well, why are my thoughts and feelings like that? I think one thing that's really interesting is when uh, people don't, aren't able to look at the facts of how something is. They're too busy just bought into their viewpoints. They're, they're very uh, uh, uncreative, if that's, if that's true. Uh, the second uh, secret is that your, your focus creates your reality. Your focus creates your reality. And that's what this was, was about um, today. So your experience in life is determined by what you put your attention on. Think about that for a second. Your experience in life is determined by what you put your attention on. If your attention is on uh, things that you're concerned about that you can't influence, if you put your attention on things that you cannot influence, that you're concerned about, do you feel powerful or powerless? Think about it. You're concerned about it, but you can't do anything about it. Do you feel powerful in that moment? Do you orient as powerful or is there just this thing you can do nothing about that you just sit there being upset about, wasting moments of your, of your existence? So your experience in life is determined by what you put your attention onto. If you focus on your end results, you inevitably attract what you want. If you focus uh, you know, too much on, on what you're concerned about that you, you can't influence or, or uh, you know, other people's opinions or all these other things all you do is end up just wasting this beautiful gift of conscious creation so uh, your focus creates your reality so your thoughts and feelings aren't reality and your focus creates it how you focus creates it the next one and this is a really big one i want you just to meditate on this one a little bit everyone has a heart Everyone has a heart, meaning everyone you come into contact with has fears, has worries, has desires, has unmet needs, has a story, has a childhood. 
everyone has a heart. Everyone. They have a heart. They think that they are doing the best thing for them. And this is something whenever I get myself uh, in conflict or upset with someone, I always remember that person has a heart. They have a heart and they're doing what they think is best for themselves, for their family, for maybe for you, for, for everyone. And really sit with that because in times of conflict, in times of increased tension, we can forget that when we bring it all down, that person is a conscious creator as well. Everyone, everyone has a heart, Archer. Everyone, they all, they all, everyone has a heart. They do, they, they do. They're a human being, they have a heart. I haven't met one yet without one. And, you know, and it's, it's a very important thing because if you connect with them at the level that they have a heart and get curious, you go, okay, well, why would they, why would they think that? Why would they be like that? What's going on for them? And you connect first in that curious place of how, why would they create that? That's interesting. Obviously they're a smart, capable person. Obviously they've got a heart. How can I connect with that? Also for my coaches, because we know that everyone has a heart, we know that they, they also have their dysfunctions. They have their sabotage patterns and that's okay. So do you, so do I. And, and once you connect to go, well, you know what? I want to know what their sabotage pattern is. And I was laughing about that with CST today uh, as I rattled off, you know, all of my team's dis dysfunctions and, and, and their goals. And I, and I can kind of have a mental model of, of people in my mind because I know that they have a heart. They have a heart. And so, so sit with that uh, sometimes uh, this week. So let, quick recap of the first three is that your, uh, your thoughts and feelings are not reality. Uh, your focus creates reality. Everyone has a heart. Everyone has a heart. Love it. Okay. Uh, next one is that there is never anything to do, but always an action to take. Okay. It's going to be a long time to get. There is never anything to do, but always an action to take. What this means is that Part of our ego thinks there's always something we must do. I must do to get, must do to get. I must do, I must do, I must do, I must do. And there's never really anything you need to do. You don't need to do it. Instead, you're too busy being it. And when you're being it, you always got to be in action. And the reason is there's actually no other option than being in some sort of action. Many of us are, uh, you know, always busy doing and doing and doing and getting and doing and doing and striving and doing instead of being and acting in the being of already having it. So there's never anything to do, but there's always an action to take. Action is about taking direct steps based on the obvious. Action is about taking direct steps based on the obvious towards creating what you want. Doing is about fulfilling certain conditions you believe are necessary before you can get what you want. I must do this. I must do this. I must go to the gym this many times. I must help this many people. I must uh, fix this about myself. I must... Uh, find a tribe, I must, I must, I must, all of these other musts, all these doings versus the action is here. And a lot of times we confuse this because the current reality shifts. The current reality shifts. And as the current reality shifts, like you're not in the same reality that you were yesterday. And so back to my story is, 12 hours passed. I went from this stable business. So I thought uh, that was pushing it, going for everything we could. 12 hours later, completely new reality. And, and, and that reality shifted and it was done. And there was, a diff there was completely different actions all of a sudden. And so we must realize that we're living in a, in a, in a creation that's always moving. Okay. And there's always an obvious action. There's always an obvious action and the obvious action is inside of your control. So, you know, I'll, I'll say it again. Action is about taking direct steps based on what's obvious towards creating what you want. 
doing is about fulfilling certain conditions you believe are necessary before you can get what you want. Very good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So there is never anything that you need to do or be. There's always an action. There's always just a, a, a way, a path of least resistance towards, towards what you want. The next one is uh, structure has integrity. Structure has integrity. Something structure dictates its behavior. And its behavior dictates the experience. Structure has integrity. If we're structured in life and we're focused on an end result and we're having it now and we're focused on creating something and we're going for it and we're, we're watching the current reality shift, that structure is going to take action. If our structure is we have to feel good before we take action, we're going to find ourselves trying to solve the whole world's problem. Structure has integrity. Does that make sense? Your, the way you structure your life has integrity. Structure creates the movement. Structure has integrity. So if your structure is on always trying to find the conspiracy theory that will finally pop the proverbial balloon and everyone will go, ah, oh, there are that. That is what it, then guess what you're just going to keep finding? Conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory after conspiracy theory. That's the structure. If your structure is to find out how there is a, an abuse of authority, that's what you'll always find. If your structure is always to find reasons why you can't have what you want, guess what you keep finding? I can't have it because of pandemic. I can't have it because there's a war. I can't have it because my friend left. I can't have it because my cat died. I can't see that structure. The structure dictates that something must always be there. True. And so the structure creates, the structure creates. And so you'll see these repeating patterns, repeating patterns, repeating patterns. The structure creates, creates the, the movement. If you, if, you know, I was talking to a colleague earlier today, she might be on the call and I was saying, look, I see your pattern and the pattern is this to always do this. And so we need a different pattern, which is just to do that. There's a, the structure that you focus on is obvious. So structure has integrity, something structure dictates its behavior and it debate, the behavior dictates the experience. In creative terms, what your attention is focused on forms the underlying structure of your consciousness. What your attention is focused on forms the underlying structure of your consciousness. Hmm. So if my attention is on how the world is terrible and against me. Does that help me create my coaching business? No, I've just told myself that the world's all against me. If my attention is on how terrible everything's going to be and how all these things that I'm concerned about, is that going to help me take an action and write the best-selling book? Is there going to be someone this next year that writes a best-selling book? Let me, let me ask you, is it going to be someone that writes a best-selling book, that puts a video out, that is someone going to do that? And then is there going to be all sorts of people that lose themselves with concern over things they cannot change? Isn't it? And it's your choice which one you're in. And I see constantly in, in the online space, people just rabbiting on about things they can't influence at all and just losing just losing their power to all of these things they can't control. And, and, you, and you watch it for years and years. Talk to a friend, actually, I've talked to a lot of people about this. I, I gave, him, gave him a call yesterday. Every time I have a call, he's always got a new fancy thing that he's going to give to his clients. This person's one of the most intelligent healers I know. And every time I talk to him, there's just a new thing that is the thing that he needs to now give to his clients. But about five years ago, I helped him with his marketing and we and, and it just didn't follow through. Five years ago, he had the right stuff. And then every three to six months, I talked to him and there's a new thing added, a new thing added, a new thing added, a new thing added. And 
it never gets out there. His structure isn't to get out there and help people. It's just to keep finding the new thing. He was a good enough healer when he, the day he was born, probably. So in creative terms, what your attention is focused on forms the underlying structure of your consciousness. Very big statement. Structure has integrity and your structure is created by where you're focused on all levels. Superconscious, unconscious, self-conscious. Next one. You get energy from a higher source. You get energy from a higher source. We call that superconscious. The key to magic is being able to connect to that higher source, gain information, and truly use your natural ability. We don't spend enough time learning how to connect to that. But if I asked you a question, you would be able to connect to it. Open-ended questions are one of the best ways to connect to that. See, most of us are old enough to remember where we were September 11, 2001. But because I didn't ask you that before, it wasn't there. You see? And now it's there. Where was that? Well, it's in a higher place. It's in your mind. It's out there. Now, the same way that you remember the past is how you remember the future. And we actually get an energy from this higher source, this higher place that we can connect into. And we're going to do recode today, obviously. And step two is about connecting to that invisible future that hasn't been manifest yet and living it before it's done. We connect to that higher source. And the, the more that you're able to listen to their muse, the more you're able to listen to your, to your end results and stay focused on that, the, the exponentially better chance they are that they will actually be manifest. The more that you use this amazing creative power to focus on all the things you're concerned about that actually you have no ability to control, the more that they just, they uh, it's like they dampen down or they weigh on your consciousness. Your consciousness is too busy being upset about all these things to be able to put its focus on what it is you want. You get energy from a higher source. You get energy from a higher source. This energy, it, it's it's so unlimited that you can put the focus on so many different things. However, as soon as you spread it, you reduce its potency. You reduce its potency. If you live in the circle of concern, it's going to systematically help all of those things exist and weigh on your ability to actually focus on what you can influence. You get energy from a higher source. You get energy from this higher source. And we must learn to cultivate that focus on what it is we want to create, not unconsciously manifesting everything we don't want to create. You see, the, the key to superconscious magic is, is developing the ability to let go of the fixed and get into the, into the, the focus of, of the, possibil the possibility and the choice, but letting go of how it is and realizing that there's magic available. There's magic available in every single moment. There's magic to transcend, to transmute, to turn lead to gold. There's magic. There's magic. And the world is gripped by this media marketing machine and narrative that pulls all of our focuses into concern. And what do we all just keep manifesting? More stuff to be concerned about. Learning to bring your focus into what you can control it puts you miles ahead of everyone else. In fact, if all you do is learn to bring back onto what you can control, how you feel, what you eat, what you drink, what you do each day, your behaviors, what you're learning, what your skills, the more you bring back into that, the more you rise above every, uh, the, the complete mess. And the more of us that do that, the more of us that do that, the less power there is on, on all of this that keeps taking us. Is it true? Last one. So let me just recap. Number one, your thoughts and feelings are not reality. Number two, your focus creates your reality. Number three, everyone has a heart. Number four, there is never anything to do but always action to take. Number five, you get energy from a higher source. Did I miss one? 
Structure has integrity. I missed one. Yeah. And it takes will is the, is the final one. The final one is it takes will. It takes will. Meaning your highest source of energy is ultimately your heart. Yet the paradox is that we're super conditioned to protect what our heart wants. And we're so conditioned to be motivated by fear instead of what we truly desire in life. Fear that we don't look good enough, fear of failure, fear of success, uh, fear of not being perfect, fear of not being good enough, fear of not being, we're so motivated to try to fulfill all these, these egoic agendas and conditions that it's almost like there's a battle to live in your heart, which is very strange, but it's true. So ultimately it takes will, meaning it takes you and you alone to sit down and make your choices, to stop focusing on what you're concerned about and focus on what you can influence. There's no trick. It just takes you doing it, meaning your willpower to go, I'm not going to focus on things I can't uh, influence or control. I'm going to focus here. I'm going to focus on what I'm creating. I'm going to take the right action. You see what I'm saying? Is that it, is that it just takes will. Your, your fears are communicated to you by the thoughts and feelings. And if you let them control you, you get taken into all these different areas and it's 2 a.m. in the morning and suddenly you're searching something that trying to explain how crazy this world is. But even if you know how crazy it is, can you actually do anything about it? And the answer is very little for most of us. And so instead we could got to you know, get back to what could we control? What can we focus on? What, what is important to us? What are we creating? What are we going to do? And it takes will. It takes will because our body, our unconscious wants to know where the saber tooth tiger is hiding. It wants to know where the boogeyman is. It wants to know the bad stuff because it believes if I know where the bad stuff is, I can avoid it. It says, if I know where the bad stuff is, I can avoid it. Instead of realizing that all you do is, is create what you do want, and there is no bad stuff there. It takes will to realize if you create paradise, there isn't a hell. When the unconscious goes, well, let, show me all where all the bad things are so I can avoid them. But all that happens is as soon as you focus on what you have to avoid, think about this. In order for you to avoid something, it has to exist. Think about that. For, for your unconscious to avoid it, it has to create it to then avoid it. You can't avoid something that's not created. So in the act of avoiding it, you create it. In the act of creating, then you just have what it is you choose. So, but it takes will. It takes will. Now, these are seven secrets of magic uh, delivered in the magician's way, which is in our recommended reading list uh, by one of my very, very, very close friends, William Whitecloud. And I recommend that you all read his book. Uh -huh.